How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that's been a quarter of a century now. I've been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close friends say, if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have now written over 130 articles and recorded over 30 hours of VMware vSphere 7 and 8 videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Expert Exchange awards over the last 11 years working with the Expert Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program since 2011 and I'm currently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last four years. And welcome back to another Hancock's VMware half hour. Hopefully this is going to be a shorty. Might go over five minutes a little bit, uh, but certainly it's not going to be a 30 minute video. Um, now, what we're going to do today is we're going to create a new distributed port group on our VDS. And we're going to create a new VM kernel on our VDS across all three hosts. And we'll quickly test it. And the reason for doing this is because in the next video, uh, we're going to look at implementing vCenter HA, vCenter High Availability. And one of the requirements of vCenter Server High Availability is it has its own, if you like, heartbeat network, uh, isolated heartbeat network, similar to what's used in Microsoft Failover Clustering, uh, where you have this private heartbeat network. Um, between witness and vCenter servers, so they basically know which is active and which is passive. So rather than making that video a really, really long video, I thought, I know what I'll do. Um, we'll do a create a new vCenter distributed port group, and we'll create a VMware kernel. We'll test it all out, and then in the next video, we'll do the, the vCenter HA piece, uh, and this is a prerequisite of it. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to click our networking. I'm going to click our VDS. Now I'm going to go back to our little crib sheet. Remember that I spoke about when we did our VDS. <coughs> um, I've already done all the donkey work on the switches and I've created a new VLAN 2233. Um, done some IP addresses. Uh, so I'm just going to use that crib sheet and I'm going to right click and say new distributed port group. And I'm going to use the name. Now our VLAN is 2033. VLAN work and the port channels and the LACP is already done. They were already three trunks connected to each of our hosts. So all I've really done is just added the VLAN to it. And I've created that V, I've created the VLAN, added the VLAN to those trunks, the LACP trunks. And I've created an IP address on the switch so that we can ping as well. So static binding elastic eight default VLAN followed by next followed by finish. So there's our new distributed port group. And I'm going to edit the settings of it and I'm going to look at the teaming and a failover. And uh, I did a quick shorty video on this in showing you how to move all the uplinks um, active and unused a lot easier than I did in the original VDS. And it was only when I was actually going back over and watching the video, I thought, why didn't I do that? So all I need to do is click unused uplinks and click move up. And now I'm just going to tag all those uplinks that I don't want to use and move down. So they're all unused. So, so that's it. So we put our, we've, mo we've moved our lag, which is two ports connected together. And I'm going to change that to root on physical load. And that's okay. So that's our vCenter HA port group created. So now what I want to do, and I think you can see in doing this, um, the, the benefit of using a VDS rather than going around individual hosts, creating vSwitches, creating individual vSwitches, creating individual vKernels, it certainly takes all the work out of doing it. So I'm just going to click add a VM kernel adapter. I'm going to attach the hosts, all three hosts. That little tick box there, missed it. Followed by next. Um, so 
We're going to use IP4. We're going to use the MTU from the switch, which is 9,000. I'm not going to select any of these services for the moment. Followed by next. I'm going to use static RP addresses and I'm going to pop back to my, my crib sheet. And I'm just basically going to drop those values in. Uh, so I'm going to use that. Probably quicker typing than actually doing cut and pasting. But anyway. So I'm going to put the sub mask in. I'm just going to copy that. I don't need to configure a gateway, so I'm going to click Next. I'm just going to have a quick look. Uh, so we've got a network label, MTU, default, SXI 7, 33 1, 33 2, 33 3. The VLAN is configured on the port group, and I'm going to click Finish. So uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, if I actually go back <coughs> and have a little look at the hosts, it's actually saying they're all connected. Uh, if I go back longhand and have a little look at the virtual switches, I can see here 2030, 2033. This is the one I've just added. Um, VMK7, which of course is the next one after VMK6, which is our VSAN one. And 172, 2033.1 on lag zero. Okay, so I have an SSH session already open. And I'm going to use that VMK ping command again, but this time I'm going to specify VMK7 and I'm going to change the IP address to 33.1. Now that's just going to ping itself. <clears throat> so that just confirms that 172.20.33.1 belongs to ESX 7 Now comes the test. Can we actually basically ping the virtual machine port group? on ESXi009, we can. And as you may have mentioned, the chairman has said, there's always that one ping that disappears initially, gets lost in the networking. Okay, um, so if we can ping nine, I'm hoping we can ping 11 if all is configured correctly. Okay. So there we go. I'm not going to go through and do all the different permutations of testing to ensure that's correct. I'll do that now. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for watching how we create a new VDS port group and a VM kernel and add them all to our cluster in one click. And I'm hoping that you can actually start to see that if you become more familiar and confident with VDS, how you can use it in your labs, or in production. You know, I had a question the other day uh, on Experts Exchange about moving from standard switches. Uh, I think this particular question, they had 12 hosts um, and they were currently using standard switches and they wanted to move over to uh, VDS. And I turned around and said, yeah, if you've got the licensing, it makes better sense to leverage VDS. It's a lot easier to configure uh, your hosts um, and they will be identical and they will be all the same and you won't make errors between creating individual vSwitches. Like, you know, if we had to do that operation on a vSwitch, I'd have to go to each individual server, uh, add a VM kernel to each individual vSwitch and do the IP addressing. So just look at the time it actually basically takes in doing that and multiply that up, you know, to 12, 25 or 64 hosts. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, come back for the next video uh, when we have a little look at deploying vCenter Server HA. Thank you very much.